to the point of being presidential. But he's a racist. He's an avowed racist. We kind of know that now. And, and I would rather deal with the reality of that than any facade he would put up trying to be presidential. Because you know that our country is dealt with racist presidents and people in the mail that often have been racist for years. I agree. I, have the, I agree. It's easier to count the ones that haven't been a right racist mail than it is to count the ones that have been racist. And if the truth is, eventually we all hope that as a country we're going to get past that point and that we'll raise kids who. You know, accept each other and think each other. You know, I don't judge people based on their race and not based them on their character. Right. We're hoping that we all raise those sort of kids. But the thing is, there are people down the street who are raising their kids differently, and we've got to figure out how to deal with that. And I would argue, too, Gary, and I love this conversation, by the way, I would argue that dealing with who Donald Trump really is um, is painful. But it actually speeds up the day when kids can actually grow up in a society where this racial animus and this racial tension is reduced because we understand that we have elected somebody in this country in 20, well, he was elected in what, 2017, 2016, who was an avid racist and used it as part of his campaign. We need to understand that's where this country is right now. I agree. I, I, I mean, you know, I, I now have in the car with me to... 14, so I'm going to be 15 year olds who I, I, I want to make sure that we teach that same thing to every single day. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you something the one that's sitting next to me, who also has my name, I learned stuff from him about, you know, not assuming that everything is racism and that some things are based just on the dollar that I never ever thought about, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think that our generation is doing the right thing and raising our kids to believe that. But at the same time, we still got a cost you, and there's you know, a bunch of other problems out there that we've got to be prepared for. You know, I, I want to ask you this, too, Kerry. I want to go behind the closed doors, if you can take me there. Within those closed doors of Republican caucuses and meetings and what have you, are there Republicans, and I'm hoping that you're one of them, who look at the racist Republicans and the avid Trump supporters and say, look, damn it, we have got to stop this racism. we got to stop this Southern strategy. And I will support the party publicly, but behind closed doors, you're, you're not going to fight until this thing is resolved. Because when I'm in those worlds, we don't actually act that ignorant. They won't say those things. They will ask, and, and, and trust me, I've had 30-plus years of them, you know, basically asking questions that make you look at them side-eye and say, you cannot really believe that. And I mean, these are people that still believe in, you know, that they believe that there's reverse racism. The people that think that there was some black guy who took out a boxing suit. And you got to sit there. And, and the only way that they learn any different is if you take the time to talk to them when they understand my background, when they understand how hard I work to get to where I am. Mm -hmm. Then they sit there and say, oh, my God, really? That's how you do it. you got to educate them one at a time. You can't just deal with them and, you know, holler at them and say you're racist and throw something at them and kick them. you got to talk to them. They've got to get to know you and you've got to get to know them. And I, I say on a regular basis, you know, that the truth is that the people that I know who live out in Howe and Brighton and the ones that live in Lansing and the ones that live on the east side near Mac and Beatway all of them want exactly the same thing. They all want good jobs and the ability to start a business and not have people try to run them out of business. They all want to be able to secure their family and live in a safe community. Absolutely. And that's, that's how you just said when you say that we've all got more stuff in common. But they don't know that. The folks on the east side don't know those people, and they assume the wrong things until they actually talk to them and get to know them. And they find out we all, you know, and, and what everybody's going to be looking for, black, white, any, they want money for infrastructure. <laughs> they want to know that, you know, the bridges are not going to crumble when we drive up.